All right, so in this tutorial, I'm gonna go over how to set up and use Snapchat Swan. Um, if you're not a Salamander user, um, you can refer to Salamander dependency setup video for the actual dependencies. Watch that before this, it's very similar. Um, I'm gonna open this up, kind of talk about what it does, go over the settings and kind of, you know, what you can use it for. All right, so it's it's somewhat similar to Salamander as far as the layout goes, uh, but it does different things here. So first things first, let's go ahead and get our settings done. This might seem a little overwhelming. It's it's not too bad. Just bear with me here. In this, I've uh, added a button here. You can go ahead and kind of get a you know read of as far as what each of these ones do you know do in relevance to another one. So, uh, but I'm gonna walk you through it here. So the pool interval. This is the interval in milliseconds between actually handling device threads. So I like 2,000 milliseconds for that. The statistics interval is usually 1,000 milliseconds because you get a good uh, rating, um, you know, good live statistics based on that. Uh, the view interval, if you want a lot of speed, I would do 1,000, but I want to be able to see my actions, so I'm going to do 2,000. Uh, as far as attempts, I'm going to do 1 and 1. If, I, if this was a, a entirely network-based bot, this would be different. But these action attempts can be one-on-one -on -one for now. Um, the idle interval, this is this bot monitors 24-7. So basically, uh, it'll check for stories if you have story enabling, you know, story scheduling enabled here. And if you know if you have outbound, inbound, you know what I mean? It, it'll do that. So it monitors 24-7 doing what it can when it can based on your limitations. So I'm gonna go ahead and help you guys set this up. So for the idle, we'll do um, 10 and 15 seconds. I would recommend a much higher interval than this, especially if you're doing outbound adding, especially since in this app, you can control the number of back-to-back of, uh, -back accepts and back-to-back -back adds, if that makes sense. So um, this is just an example, I'm gonna do 10 to 15. The network timeouts are not really relevant right now, uh, but just do 20 and 40 for good measure. Local timeouts, these are extremely important. If you have a slow emulator or running a lot of emulators, do five seconds. If you're running one to three emulators or the emulators are very stable, do two seconds. Uh, for verify, pretty much the same. For media, depending on the, the size of videos or pictures you're uploading and the speed of your emulators or phone, this is gonna vary. I like to do 20 to 30 seconds. Uh, better safe than sorry there, especially since the media is being used to schedule story. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and locate a package. This is for automatic installation of Snapchat package. If I wanna do that. And I'm gonna call its name on the system is com.snapchat.android. And the timeout in seconds allowed for this package to automate install. A lot of people have made the mistake of leaving this 20 seconds or whatever. It should be 60 plus. If you if your droid's really slow, it will take a while. The package itself is 50 megabytes. It has to push to the device and then install, unzip and install, right? So you know that's that. Um, on this package reset interval has been re-enabled. So uh, you can what this does it resets the package, basically stops it before before doing this um, idle. So it would simulate somebody leaving the app for a you know period of time. So we'll do, uh, I believe I did minutes on this. So we'll do uh, three, let me see what I did. What I do minutes. Yeah, package timeout. Package intervals, yeah, okay. So it is minutes, I did do minutes. So yeah, t two to three minutes should be good. And uh, it's kind of unnecessary though, but it, it's, it's cool. All right, so once again, you need to locate your ADB. Best way to do this, percent app data percent. Go to, click, click app data up here, go to local, Android, SDK, Platform tools, adb.exe. Boom, hit save right after that. All right. Now we're going to get into our actual actions. But before we do that, we can actually start the app. And 
And by starting it here, it initiates the monitoring of devices on the system and enables statistics, right? So right now, I don't have any emulators loaded. I probably should have done that before I started the video. Let's go ahead and get that done real quick. All right, I'm going to go ahead and load up Thought 3. All right, cool. All right, so now you can see I have this here. So uh, you just want to make sure emulator is connected and all good once you've set those ADB settings. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually set the locations. Uh, real quick, to show you how to do this, um, you go into settings, go to system, about emulated device, find the build number, and click this until it tells your developer. Then go back. Then you can find developer options. In this, you're going to find something called pointer. You can also, to make it even easier, you can do pointer location. You want to make sure this is enabled. This gives you this little bar up here which shows you X and Y axes. So you definitely want that enabled. Another thing, which is I have another video, but fixing keyboards, right? Uh, type keyboard, keyboard and inputs. You'll see virtual keyboard. Your main is Gboard. That's what's set up right now. So you're going to click that and you'll either see preferences or you'll see text correction here. Text correction may be inside of preferences, but either way, you'll get to it here. Text corrections. Okay. So next word suggestions, no. Offensive words, no. Uh, emoji suggestions, no. Um, suggestion strip, no. And then uh, I've already disabled this, but this is the biggest one, auto correction. If this is not disabled, your links will get messed up. Auto capitalization as well. Uh, double space period, disable that. You can see I pretty much have everything disabled on here. Once that's done, your links are going to send out nicely. All right, now that that's done, I'm going to go set locations in Snapchat in the settings. We're going to load up Snapchat. Toggle my settings back here. Okay. So the first thing is we're, we're going to go ahead and uh, set up story scheduling. So to start that, we have an action of start story, which is right here. Okay, it's this little button here. And you can see we're at 535-1681. So 535-1681. And I'm just going to offset that a little bit. So we'll do 536-1682. Done. Okay, so the interval between doing that, we'll just do a nice uh, one to two seconds because um, we want we want to give a little bit of time for Snap to initialize. You can see this is a nice, easy organized here. So, actually toggling toggling the gallery is this camera roll here. Okay, so that'd be seven five two two five one seven five two and two five one. So we'll do two five two. The max and seven five five three, and on the interval on the interval for that we'll just add a max of one second. So it'll be in between zero to one thousand milliseconds as far as a random delay. For selecting the media, which it will push new media. It's not like you're limited to one one thing here. It pushes new media unique file name. So even though it's not a live snap technically. Uh, it is unique and it will always be unique depending on what you load. So, all right. So the next option here is selecting the, the media. And basically that's anywhere in this first item here. Okay. So I'm going to do 192.532. 192.532. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to do 195 and 534 just to create a little randomization. And the interval for that, I'm going to go ahead and add a max of one second. Uh, now, editing media. So that is this. Um, it's this here. So that will be 821713. 821713. Right. 
So we'll do 84 and 17, 14. And we'll just, once again, max one second delay. Um, optionally in story scheduling, you can add a link. I wanna go ahead and do that. So um, once you click edit, obviously that link button is right here. Okay, and that is uh, 1,637. 1,000. 1,000, six. Boom, all right, cool. Well, once again, just a one second max for that. And then a little delay between searching the link. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a one second max for that. Uh, confirm confirming the link right that's actually um, it's not that it's actually this button here so attach a snap so I'm gonna get XY here so we have five oh five oh six and five seventeen hundred so we'll call it five oh five seventeen hundred And I do want I want between three and four seconds because it will vary on your website loading. You know, you want to let it lo load fully. Trust me, It'll be smoother. Okay, so now once you've attached a snap, it's gonna click send to or that. Uh, my bad. Uh, let's go ahead and enable filter. So you can enable filter and optionally filter color. I want them both enabled. So for filter, that button, I can already tell you right now that X axis will work at 1,000. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and set that. 1,000, we'll do 1,001. And for the Y, that's gonna be 141. And we'll call it 142 there, okay? And the interval here, we'll just once again do another, uh, do another one second max, keep it nice and quick. And I do want a color, so the color once again is going to be 1000, 1001 probably, or whatever the same of that previous one was as far as the X. The Y is going to vary differently though because you can control the color range. So like I want purple and that starts at 300 and I'll go to like green or whatever, that'll be 550. So I'll do 300 to 550 and it will pick a random color every time in between there. So for that interval, we'll just once again do a nice uh, one second there, boom. All right, now this send to uh, send send to keyboard confirm. Once again, this is gonna have a X axis of about a 1000 or 1001, right? Same as the other ones. It's gonna be very similar on that right hand side. You're, it'll vary by device. I'm using a Pixel 2 here, or I don't know what I'm using, but you can ask me. Um, the you need to find a general location. I find that usually 1000 X and then 1735 or 1730 is like usually what works for all of those. So we'll do 1730 and 1731. Okay. And we should be good there. If we're not, it, uh, it'll be very apparent. Hit me up if you have questions with that. And the interval between actually doing that, once again, we'll just do a max of one second. Um, I'm not gonna go over accepting and adding right now. I'm gonna go over um, just setting up the story posting. We're already 14 minutes in this video, so that may have to be a separate video. We'll see. But right now, let me show you how, how to set up story uh, story campaigns. So first thing to do is to actually create your story, right? So this is kind of what it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this out just so you can see. So you set your campaign. Um, in this sense, it's the actual name of the story campaign. It's kind of classified as a sub campaign. So I'm just gonna call it story one for this example. You can call it whatever you want, all right? Uh, just try to keep it lowercase is my recommendation to you. Now, I can actually click here and I can locate the media that I want to actually be posted for this story, right? So on my desktop, I have some media here. I can load a picture or I can load just this MP4. It's, it's like seven seconds max. If you load a big MP4, it won't work. And I recommend a, a 1080 uh, resolution on that. Go ahead and just add that. All right, boom. So you can add a limit of those. You can add them while they're running. You can change it, whatever, like you get me. 
So the links for the swipe up, since it's already in here with the same campaign, I'm not going to show you how to do that. You get it. The filters is the filter to use, you know, for the text of the filter in that actual, you know, you get me, right? So that's that. And then uh, we'll go over the schedule right now. Okay, so you can see I have a couple that were scheduled from yesterday that were already pulled. It actually tells you whether it was pulled. It can kind of refresh and it will save it so it won't, it won't get reused by accident if, if it were to crash or you closed it hard or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and clear these just because why not keep it clean. And I'm going to go ahead and add one. So you're going to put a timestamp here. You could literally do like, you know, 10 to, you know, 1990 type, you know, with a you get me right you know you can do it it'll parse pretty much any da um, date and time format right probably even a unix timestamp but i would recommend keeping it simple for the i you know january whatever you can even you can even backdate it like if you know if it needed to catch up so 2019 even right at 7 21 p.m it'll get it because it's it's behind if you get what i mean so now the name of the campaign, like the actual campaign that I'm gonna link to the device is what I set here, right? So this would be thought one, like, like write my emulator name. And then I can do a sub campaign, which is the actual name of the story campaign, which we did story one. I think you're following me here. Boom, add that, good to go, okay? All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and stop this because the stats are, 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 uh, are not right at this point. But uh, yeah, one thing, if you're stuck in a store, you want to dis discard before you, uh, like if you're in this process, discard that before you come back, right? I do have it stopping the app before it does a new scheduled story. So we'll be able to recover that though. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and, oh shit, double clicked it. All right, now I go ahead and start this after setting campaign to thought one. And I can go ahead and start it. Now I don't have outbound adding or accepting enabled, so it's just gonna it's just gonna monitor. You see right now it's doing that that idling right now before it continues, which we did a randomization of between 10 and 15 seconds. It it got uh, uh, 14,208 milliseconds. So I think I made a mistake with my uh, schedule there. Hold on a sec. Looks like I did, yeah.
my god. So it's not working because I forgot to enable this. Oh my god. Okay, so in settings, you need to enable story scheduling or it's not going to work. I feel like an idiot right now. Um, and the peak, right? So this is the number of stories it will it will do before moving on to another action. So for me right now, I just want one story. So I'm going to go ahead and click save settings. And now it's going to go ahead and pick that up on the next cycle here. You'll see. All right, so you can see it just stopped the package and now it's pushing that video to the camera roll. All All right, and you can see it indexed it with a, with a random name in front. So it's unique for every upload, even if the image was the same. And because you can schedule each story individually, even though it's not a live snap, you're not really at so much risk of getting banned. So. So you can see it just selected the media. It's gonna go ahead and edit it. I'm gonna go ahead and add a filter like we, you know, set it up to do. Nice blue color, nice, nice. I like it. And there we go. We type our little filter. Confirms it. I'm gonna go ahead and add our link. And you can see it's waiting a couple seconds. My internet's really good this morning, but uh, yeah, that's a good ratio there. All right, now it's gonna choose who it wants to send it to. Oops, look at that. Post a story got messed up. I must have messed the value up. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. I'm gonna go back to my settings and figure out what I did. Okay, so I forgot to set my story. I, I apologize. I'm, I'm running a little slow this morning. So. Oh my god. Okay, so my story is this right here. And that is, uh, we'll just do, yeah, we'll call it 500 by 750. 500 by 750. Do 752. And 502, just for a little randomization. And the max on that, we'll just do one second on that. All right, apologize. All right. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start her up. Because we have that other campaign there, uh, the schedule will work now as well. But you can see that first one was pulled. And you can also sort by index. You can sort by timestamp and you know whether or not it was pulled or whatever if you need that. So. Given that this uh, video is going on 30 minutes now, I'm going to do the settings for the other options, other models or whatever you want to call them in a separate video. A lot of, a few have asked, uh, you know, why, why not just join this with uh, Salamander? Well, you know, Salamander does completely different actions um, the settings are completely different. Salamander is already a complicated application in itself. And the actions of auto responding versus this are kind of two different methods. 
and the two different methods come with different uh, band rates, etc. Right. So um, I may end up merging them, but right now it's uh, this was the best option, most efficient, and uh, I think everyone will enjoy it. The other thing is, while this does adding like um, I mean accepting like salamander, it does it much more efficiently. You can do multi multi back to back. It's way more efficient. I'll show you that in the next video. Right now, you can see I have this moving a little slow, so we can see on the video. But you can really drop this down with whatever delays you want. You can do zero delays on certain actions, whatever works for your emulator, right? If you need help with that, hit me up, of course, or hit up Kieran. All right, so there we go. We just posted that story. Gotta love it. It's removing the media. Boom. And you can see here, all the stories have been handled. So now. This thing will just sleep basically. You'll see it'll just it'll get another sleep and wait for either you to input one manually or for one to become available based on the timestamp, okay? So that's really cool. You can literally do your work for a week ahead of time and you don't have to, you know, like you saw in settings, you don't have to post uh, stories with links, swipe up links. So if you're just like trying to, you know, keep consistent content on account without, you know, even any risk of flagging, this is a great tool for you. All right, so I'm gonna end the video there and uh, I'll start up a new one. We'll go over outbound adding and inbound accepting and speeding that up very quickly. All right, all right guys, if you have any questions, hit me up. Uh, wish you the best of luck, this is Norm.